What's up YouTube, we are back again. If you're new here, my name is Danny James and today I'll be showing you Adobe Editing Transition Stroke Effect that I don't really have a name for yet, but we're going to find out later. Thank you for your support so far. We're almost hitting our first thousand subscribers. Hopefully by the time this video goes up or by the time you get to watch it. If you do end up enjoying the video, kindly give it a thumbs up and without further ado, let's jump right into it. We are on Adobe After Effects and I have these three clips right here. I have given them some names so that you can easily refer to them. The first clip has Davido and the second one has Biang and the third one has Tion. So you're going to transition using the effect that I just showed you earlier on in this video. And the first thing that I want to do, I want to transition between this first video and the second one. What I'll do on this video, I'll create a duplicate for it, hit Ctrl D and now we have this duplicate. Now we are going to click S so that you can get our scaling properties. So hit S on your keyboard to get scaling properties and enable that keyframe. So you're going to decide the point in time where you want to begin making this effect. So let's say about this time, we're going to start scaling down this duplicate and up. So after a few frames, you can also use your page up and page down to move a few frames. So let me count about five. Or let's say 10. And then after 10 frames, I'll scale this down to around 50. From here, I'll go 10 frames again. And then I'll scale it again back to the first value, which was 100. So just click here, put it to 100. So if you play it, it's going to scale down, scale up, scale down. So let's copy this keyframe because you already know how it goes from now on. And then you don't really have to go strictly to the frames that I just said. You can use your eyes to measure this. Then I'll copy this keyframe, put it somewhere here. So I'll extend that video up to that place. And also for the one which is beneath it. So the video will start running like this. That wasn't so fast. I, I'd expect to have a faster movement here. So let's let's reduce the interval between the keyframes. You can use your eyes to just measure these roughly. Since this clip, uh, the first clip ends here. Okay. So you're going to do this. You're going to delete this extra keyframe and also the extra clip right here. I've chopped the extra part of the video because it was transitioning into a different scene, which isn't what we are looking for. So I'll push these keyframes a little bit earlier and then I'll copy the extra ones right here. So let's play this. Yeah, so that's what I want. As soon as it zooms in and then out, then in, then out. Again, you can highlight on all these keyframes, right click, put them on easy ease. And then when you go into your graph, you can see it has this very linear way of transitioning. We let it run and then as soon as it gets to this part, we need it to zoom again. So I'll push these keyframes a little bit earlier. And then I want the last keyframe to be zooming in, that's why. So I'll copy this one, paste it right here. Now. When it gets to this point, that's where we begin making this transition. We bring the second clip right here and we'll bring it right next to it. So they are on the same frame, literally. And then what I want to do, I want to scale down this second clip. So I'll hit S, let me collapse the other. I'll take S and then I'll zoom it up to about that part. But first of all, I want to see how it looks at 100%. The video as it is when it's at 100%, it doesn't cover the entire frame. So what I'll do to mitigate this, I'll enlarge it. For this video to perfectly fit on this screen, it has to be scaled up to around 134. Now the next step, in case this doesn't happen to every clip, but just in case you have uh, dimensions which aren't aligning to the rest of, uh, of the composition, this is how you can mitigate this. We'll just pick our masking tool. We'll pick our masking tool. In this case, you can pick this triangle and then you can zoom in. I want us to draw from this corner. No, sorry. 
I didn't click on the video so that we can be making a mask. And then I'll I'll zoom out, and then I'll come again, grab this point. I can specify where I want these points to go, so I'll highlight on that point. Take it there, right here. I'll also move this other point to the bottom right corner. And the same for this one. Just make sure they are on a straight line, all of them. And then you can click away to just see what it looks like. Now, if we scale this video down, there is no extra content on the right or to the left. And that's why we did this. And then from this point, we shall enable this keyframe for scaling. And then you'll make sure this video is at least smaller than the one which is right here. It doesn't become bigger than this one. So, so that you can sell this illusion a bit smaller. So I'll start it at 63. So that as soon as this video ends, the other one begins right in the middle. And then what we need to note is that as soon as we as this one starts scaling up we need the other video to keep on playing the previous video we need it to keep on playing so i'll extend this second video a bit now it changes from this it changes from this to this video and then we'll start scaling it up so I don't like how the video sorts of cuts in. Now let me just adjust this a little bit. Let's bring this here. Let's delete these two keyframes and bring this video here. So it will start up. And then as it comes back again, it's a second video. And then once this video goes up to 100%, it will now scale down again. So let's go a few frames copy the first keyframe so that we don't have to do this manually and then copy the other keyframe come a few frames now from here we can copy the rest of the keyframes Control c measure that distance and then paste it so it will do this 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 now after this goes to 134 full scaling as it scales down we need the original version of this video to keep on playing so that's why we shall do this let me first of all collapse every other thing at this very point that it goes up to 100 percent or it's 134 in this case we shall hit ctrl d and then you're going to drag that layer below and then we're going to cut that layer such that it only starts playing from this point and then we're go also going to delete keyframes on that duplicate so hit s disable everything so this video changes, goes to 134. The original video, now the second one, it keeps on playing and then everything happens. As we did, just make sure to highlight on your keyframes and put it on easy ease. So let's play this. So these ones are a bit not well spaced out, so I'll space them again. So let's play this. One thing I haven't shown you is how to make it a bit more realistic. As it zooms in and out, we need some sort of blur or as you'd call it motion blur. You can click here to switch between modes. And then once you're on this side, you can enable motion blur for this clip and also for this clip. Now, if we try to play it, it will sort of have this extreme zooming. Okay, you can see how it acts. Now you can you can adjust the amount of blur that happens here by simply changing the shutter angle. Just come to composition settings. I set this one to 270, usually you'll find it at 90. So if it's at 90, it's not as strong. You can see it's not really strong. If we go back again, go to advanced, go to let's say 180, you can see now we are beginning to get those blur. And that will affect all the layers on your composition. So you can work with a higher value. Personally, let me go for a 250. You can go as much as you want. 720 seems to be the limit. So I leave it at 270 and that looks good. 
You don't really have to use it as a transition as I'm doing here. You can use it just on your clips as they're playing. And then you can just end it there. And then the video can keep on playing. So you can use it as, as an effect on your video. Let's say uh, I can cut part of this, then make sure this runs from here. So if I played from here, we'd play normally and then we'd have something zooming in. Let me see the keyframes. <coughs> so this one starts at 100. Okay, that's perfect. So let's cut this video here. So the original video would play and then you'd have the duplicate zoom in and out. And then as soon as it zooms out eventually, you can go on with your video. So you don't really have to use it as a transition, you can use it as an effect also. Now we can transition from these two clips to the next one in the same way. So in order to go on to the next clip, I'll drag it here. But then I also need to have to be in the point where this clip zooms in. We'll go a few frames here and extend this and then copy this keyframe. So that it's right at this spot whereby we bring in the next clip. So I'll bring this clip right here. Also, you should take note of how we shall arrange these layers so that it makes sense. You can get confused then that's why I really labeled these layers so that you can follow well. So as soon as it zooms in, I'll bring in the next clip. And also, I'll also make sure that the original clip keeps on playing beneath for a few. And then I'll enable scaling properties on this clip so at this point i'll scale it down so that it's smaller than the one which is right behind and then also we don't want this to appear in front of this effect so what we'll do we shall drag that layer beneath so that it comes out like it comes from this other clip and then we'll do the scaling as we did for the others Right click, put them on easy ease. Okay, it's going up to 98 and let's say it 100. So let's check all the keyframes. 100, we need to set them to 100. All right, now the last part of this tutorial is to finish this off. So as soon as it scales back to 100, that's when we leave the original clip. Now at this point we shall hit Ctrl D to duplicate and then delete keyframes from that clip. And then the last thing is to put this layer below the other one. Because we need this other one to have precedence. And then we also need it to start as soon as this one hits 100. So just take note of this. I think these are the small details which makes it hard to do this effect on Adobe Premiere and that's why you'd need a lot of Adobe After Effects because of the layering style and the interface that you have. I wouldn't really do this on a normal music video, like I wouldn't transition continuously like this between clips, I would at least rest in between clips and play it before changing it. If it were up to me, uh, let's say I was transitioning between this clip and this other one. I would let it run and as soon as it transitions from here to this point so s as soon as it gets to the 134 mark i'll end this clip and then let the original part of it go on so i would have it go like this yeah something like that it will zoom in zoom out zoom in come back with a new video zoom out the new video stays and then it goes on like that yeah that's it if you made it this far thank you so much for watching this video i hope to see you in the next one and if you did enjoy the content kindly give it a thumbs up and in case you have any question suggestion or comment leave it, it on the comment box and i'm really happy to interact with you guys my name is danny james see you in the next video cheers